So what is now the actual frequency response of our FRR filter? So what is what is the, the actual response in in terms of so what is this filter actually actually doing when it's when it's applying the L filter command to it and so so remember the the frequency response what we wanted to have here so this one so omega and that's here h two e two j omega so that's that's just our ideal response but of course the the real response will be not so nice not so not so perfect so how do we how do we get now the now the real response out there remember what we did is so we did a inverse fourier transform analytical in this case in an analytical way and um, with that we got our impulse response h of n so now very simple what and what we can do now is to get our our um, response what we do always if we want to have a spectrum so we use our our discrete Fourier transform so use DFT or FFT and um, plot the spectrum simple simple as that yeah so so therefore so we do that. So we do the Fourier transform, and then with that, we are getting a discrete response. So something like h of k, and then um, hopefully this this will 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 look like look like that. Remember, the discrete Fourier transform has has only positive positive values, and so therefore with that we can check what our filter filter actually does and so so i've just copy and pasted the the commands here from the previous slides just in here so that we have if we are running this here so we're just now getting here this um, filtered filtered ecg so that's still there um, and so now instead of um, of plotting this here now we can now now do simply a Fourier transform on the on the on the function on the function h here, and so so we can write h h f and then no psi psi no num numpy and then um, f f t f f t of um, of h then gives us the, the spectrum or what we are actually interested in is um, is the absolute absolute value of this because we're interested in the spectrum and so now here we see we see now the um, frequency frequency response of our of our barn stop filter here so if we if I get rid of this of this here, so then remember this was here our our ideal ideal response, and now I've done the um, inverse here, and so therefore what we are what we're now having here, this here, this um, corresponds now to that to that function here. So now we see the the real response doesn't look so so perfect and nice than the ideal one here. So we so we're getting here these ripples here 
and is also not reaching zero here but is just hovering hovering above here at, uh, at roughly this level here so usually what what people plot is the um, frequency response in decibel so the actual actual um, filter frequency in in decibel and um, that's obviously is a well-known formula here 20 multiplied by logarithm to the base base of 10 and then v out divided by v in and so that's here in this in this case here our our h2 j omega or or our h h2 h2k from our from our dft or fft and so if you want to see this in in decibel then um, so what we can do here is it's just just um, multiplying taking taking the the logarithm to to the base base 10 and multiplying this with with 20 so if we do that here then we see see the damping here in our case is roughly minus 25 decibel 